Well, hello there, my friend. Jonathan Doyle with you once again. Welcome to The Daily Message. As always, I'm really pleased you're here. Hope I can bring you something really useful today. Today, we're going to deal with a listener or viewer question, uh, whether you're on the podcast or YouTube version today. Welcome aboard, because this is a great question from a listener, and uh, I just think there's some stuff in here that's going to be useful for everybody. It's, uh, it's a really beautiful and vulnerable message around the challenges that they're facing in life. But if you are human, you are also facing challenges challenges as well. So what we're going to learn today is going to be applicable for all of us. If you are new to the channel, please make sure you have subscribed. It does make a big difference. And go check out all the links under here. If you like what you're hearing, find me on Instagram. You can book me to speak. At the time I'm recording this, I'm just about to do a new USA tour. So I'll be in the US from September 5 right through into October. So reach out if you're in the US and you would like me to come and speak. All right, you ready? We got some stuff to do. So let's talk about it. I'm going to read you parts of this message today and I'm just going to respond in kind of real time to how I would, I guess, coach this person. I'm a believer as I get older that you don't necessarily need a vast plethora of strategies and ideas to change where your life's at. I think we're a very therapeutic culture, so we kind of think that to fix something, we need to go way back into our childhood and unearth everything. Look, this is just my opinion, so you don't have to agree with me, but I think one of the problems with the therapeutic model for many people is that what you end up with is a clear story about why you're messed up. And well, for a start, we're all messed up. It's just a question of degree, but we want more than just knowing a story. We want to have, we want to be able to do practical, real things in the world, all right? So the person has emailed me here. I've got some notes over here, which I'll just turn to, but they're saying, you know, they said, Jonathan, how are you going? And then they say, probably you're going amazing because of all your positive thinking. Let's clear that one up first. I am probably an, a pessimist by nature. I get it, the irony of being on this channel and having historically had quite a pessimistic nature. That's changing a lot for me and has changed. I've had to work really hard at it. And that's the first point, that positive thinking isn't just something that's super easy. It's something you have to work at. So I want to get everybody to understand that, that if you want to enjoy your life more, if you want to have more positive experiences in life, it is work, especially around this positive positive thinking piece. So this person here says, my mind easily falls back into negativity, especially when people tell me how to do things, you know, that they, so the first thing is that as life unfolds for this person, they're just dealing with this constant collapse back into negativity. Understandable, right? Life's difficult. So we're going to work at this. So I want you to at least take away from today's message that if you struggle with negativity, don't wait for some magical moment when you're just suddenly going to, it's all going to go away. Or the other mistake we make in life is that we think that if we just persevere through some set of circumstances, then our life's going to align the way we want. And then when it aligns, everything's going to be okay. We won't be negative anymore. It just doesn't tend to work like that. You know, what, no matter what problems you resolve in your life, what's going to happen is you're just going to get a new batch. All right. That doesn't need to be depressing. It's just the nature of life itself is that we go through one set of problems and challenges, then we get the next set. I often use the image of like if you've been to the ocean and the waves are coming in and it's a great fun, right? You dive under a wave, you come up and there's the next one. And here in Australia, we've got great beaches. And if the swell is up, you know, you dive under a wave, your head pops up and what's in front of you is another massive wave. It's kind of fun. And that's the nature of life, right? So don't think that just because you get through one set of problems, everything's going to resolve for you in life. It's just going to be automatically perfect. It's just going to keep having challenges. So let's get good at how we manage them. So this person then says that their spouse, the person they are married to as they fall back into negativity makes them feel really inadequate. And that really resonated, not from my own experience as such, but that line resonated. It really sort of caught my attention because what we want in our marriages for those of us who are married or in serious relationships is you want somebody on your team who is 90 odd percent of the time in your corner, pushing you forward and really advancing you and, and being your number one cheerleader. Now, I've been married uh, 22 years and my daughter and I were driving the other day and I was talking about Karen, my wife, to my daughter. And I just said, I said, your mum's a boss. Like, she's just a complete boss. Like, I am Karen's number one cheerleader. And I think I have been for most of our marriage early. And she talks about this on stage sometimes. Early in our marriage, she, you know, had this huge fear of public speaking. Now she's a global speaker. She's amazing. But early in our marriage, she was so afraid of that. And, and I just kept pushing her forward. I enrolled her in courses that we did together and I kept pushing her forward and she talks about it she says you know Jonathan was the the real catalyst for getting me out of my shell and onto the stage so 
we are a perfectly imperfect couple, Karen and I. Uh, we we are each other's greatest supporters, but we're human and we have our challenges and our setbacks. But in general, I am her number one fan and I know that she is totally behind me and is always trying to support me and push me forward too. The reason I'm saying all this is if that is not your experience, you really want to put some time and effort into that. Marriages can go for a very long time, ideally, and you don't want to spend a lot of your life with somebody who is is putting you down, making you feel inadequate or weak. Now, I'm not saying leave your marriage or your relationship at all. Definitely not saying that. What I am saying is this. The most important conversation in life is often the one that you're not having. Because depending on our personalities, often we want to avoid difficulties and problems and setbacks. And we don't want the stress and tension of difficult conversation. But reading this message, if it is your spouse that is making you feel inadequate, you've got to have that conversation. And you've got to find the right way to do it at the right time when people are receptive. You use a lot of I messages. So when you're dealing in a difficult conversation, you want to use I messages. I feel that. You don't want to use messages like, you make me feel, you do this to me, because people just get defensive. You want to say, look, I feel that I need a lot more support. I feel inadequate when you do or say X. And you've got to start having that conversation. Maybe it needs possibly an outside facilitator, maybe, but you want to fix this piece. So whether you're in a dating relationship and you're 15, uh, or whether you're 85 in a marriage that's been going for 60 years, you want to sort these ones out. It can be done. I think for me, like in terms of relationships, I just want to be one of those really cool old couples that are totally into each other in their 80s and you know beyond. I just admire my wife, I really do, and I want that for other people too. So have those difficult conversations. You know, life is short. You want someone pushing you forward. All right, we've talked about that. So the next thing they say is that when they feel, they say they, that because of their spouse making them feel inadequate, they collapse into sulking, they give up, they feel useless, and then they ruminate. Understandable, these are, these are kind of what I'd call psychic defenses and life's really awful, we often collapse into learned behaviors that we learned when we were really young. So it can be, you know, we learn to sulk when we were young, we learn to give up and go into hopelessness, uh, and then rumination. I mean, there's so much in this. I would say that you have to go to war for yourself. If you want a different quality of life and you notice that you have these habits of sulking or collapsing into despair, no one is coming to the rescue. This is a really crucial idea. If your life is not how you want it, people do care about you but no one is going to fix it. No one is going to ride in on some magical personal development horse and fix your life. So when the minute you catch yourself sulking, I would just be awareness. So you go, I'm doing it, I'm sulking. There's no point in sulking, I need to do something else. Now that something else could be going for a walk, going for a run, take yourself shopping, whatever. You just do something that busts you out of that. You know, rumination, I get it. Rumination is life's awful. We think about the problems, we sit on them, we stew on them. I, I just get myself out of that so quick. I'm just like, dude, you know, I'm in the studio here recording this this morning. It's, um, it's now, what time is it? It's uh, 5.50 a.m. I've been up since about three. I had calls to the US, as I said, this morning. And I just, when I was lying there at three, I'm like ruminating about the day and different issues and challenges. And I've just got so good at going, dude, you know, you're doing it. And I get up and I'm out. I'm just like, I'd rather go make a coffee and be tired and get on with stuff than sit around and ruminate. So you don't beat rumination with interior logic. You don't sort of beat it by going, oh, no, that's not true. And you, you just don't. You just stop. You, you get up, you move, you do something that stops you. You just catch yourself in the pattern. Oh, I'm ruminating. Oh, I'm sulking. Stop it. Do something else. Shift your pattern. This is what Tony Robbins is so good, right? And, and all of this leads into the famous big three, state, story, and strategy. You remember this? Our experience of life is always affected by these three things, the state we're in. So if you're sulking, if you feel that everybody else is making you do it, you're, you're probably going to be in a collapsed state. You'll find that your breathing is like... <sighs> Your breathing collapses, your posture collapses, you feel yuck, you feel gross, you don't want to do anything, so your state is off. Then the, as soon as your state's off, you go into the story, oh, well, I feel like this because my life's like this and my husband or my wife or my boss or my career or whatever, you go into the rumination, you tell yourself a terrible story and out of a bad state and a bad story, you'll come up with a terrible strategy, which will be, I'm going to go and eat a, a bucket of cookies and cream ice cream, right? Whereas if you go, if you get yourself into a good state, I'm not going to you know, my story is 
it's not the way I want it, but it's going to be different. I'm in a new story. I'm starting a new adventure in life. I'm starting a new chapter. You get a different story. You'll come up with better strategies. So this rumination, they say, eventually makes them feel sick or they talk themselves into headaches, aches, and pains. Look, I get it. I just think the way you address this is movement and action. Anybody watching this, if you're sitting around thinking that you are going to outthink your problems, that you are going to sit on the couch and then you're just going to eventually turn a corner and feel better, it's not how it works. It just is not the fundamental modality or mechanism of how life works. You have to do stuff. I use the body to lead the brain. So often if I just keep moving, keep active, keep going, go and get some exercise, go and do something I enjoy, that leads to a shift, an important shift. So I get it. I get that you collapse into feeling awful and you are going to continue to feel that for as long as you stay trapped in that state, story, and strategy. So move, 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 move. If it just means walking to the letterbox, getting some fresh air, listening to an audio book, but but don't be a passive victim. Don't be a passive victim to your circumstance or your story, okay? You gotta show up in your own life. 90% of this is just showing up for yourself. It's just going, you know what? No one's coming to rescue. I gotta do this. I've got to take my life back and it can be done. So the last thing they talk about is they are, they say that, you know, they, they're finding life very challenging, very difficult. I don't know if this is helpful, but one of the cool things to realize is that life is difficult. That's not a profound statement. It's, an, it's something that I've become more and more aware of. Just to begin to understand life is difficult. You know, life is challenging. If you find yourself sitting around going, why is life so hard? Well, it's because it's hard. It just is. We didn't get to write the script. There's beauty, there's joy, there's wonderful stuff, but there's also difficulty and hardship. So I get myself out of that state by just saying, oh, it's hard because it's hard. It just is. So I'm going to accept it and roll with what I got. So we accept that life's a challenge. This person says that as they get older, they feel sick. They're worried about taking medication. They're worried about dying. And that they're worried that at this age, they've got years of anxiety, stress, and depression ahead of them. All right. It doesn't have to be that way. And even what I just read there, you can hear the story. So I'm, and I totally get it. I feel compassion. I feel empathy. I want this person to shift and to win. The first thing I would say about that kind of meta narrative they've got, now you, you know, you're watching this going, I don't feel that way. You're going to have a different meta narrative and, and you will have areas of life that are problematic for you. So all of us are in this together. First thing is to say life doesn't have to be this way. We don't have to, we don't have to settle for our story. We don't, you know, we don't have to, I'll give you an example. My grandfather died at 44 of a massive heart attack. He was stressed, big smoker, overweight. My father had his first heart bypass in his 50s. I take health and fitness incredibly serious. I I do so much every single day. Now, I'm not God. Maybe I die in five minutes. God forbid I don't. But I don't have to settle for that story. I don't have to go, oh, well, you know, these things are congenital. They're passed on to... Really? Did it have anything to do with the fact that these guys kind of didn't look after themselves, that I could make different choices? So... You might come from a family of alcoholism. You might come from a family of, of depression or abuse or trauma, but that doesn't mean you're, you're consigned by the cosmos to repeat that. Sure, we, we have aspects of our childhoods and patterns that we learn, but we're not consigned totally to them. So I want to say to this person, you are not destined to live out this pattern that you're talking about. You don't have to be sick. You really don't. You don't have to be sick. And, and we can prove this by saying, you know, this person is writing to me, they're in their 60s. Can we agree that there's 80-year-olds in amazing health? Can we agree that there's 90-year-olds in amazing health? Is it possible that as you get older, you know, the do you need medication? Like we, we just sort of assume that as you get older, old people take heaps of pills. Do they need to? Let me tell you something about the body. The body is always driving towards healing. The body, if we stop doing dumb stuff to it, is always trying to get to homeostasis. It's always trying to get to health. So maybe it's possible that you can live this next 20 years, 30 years of your life in really good health if you make different choices. So what else? And they say it's, it all stresses and overwhelms me. I'm just trying to really capture their experience. It doesn't have to be that way. And here's what you do. If you want a different story than what you are writing about here, then you need to start taking massive action. So the way we do this is we intensify pain. So we actually go, right, if you keep living this story, what are you going to get? And they're like, well, I'll get more depressed. I'll get more... Sure, feel that. Think about that really deeply. If you're a ruminator, let's use rumination to help you. Ruminate on the fact that the next 20 years of your life could be absolutely awful. And then ask yourself, does it have to be that way? Do I want it to be that way? And if you don't, then here's what you do. You start taking massive action. What's that action? Personally, it doesn't matter. Just take some. Decide that you're going to run a marathon 
on your 65th birthday. Oh, that's the craziest thing you've ever heard of. How would I do that? Well, get a coach, jump online, or type in marathon coach, get a coach. Explain to a good coach that you want to run a marathon and that you, you're sick and you're this and you're that and they will write you a program that will be like, right, day one, walk 100 meters. All right, that's all you got to do for day one. And within 12 months, they'll get you over the line in a marathon. Take up, get a pilot's license, jump out of a plane, whatever. Do something that shifts this story. It is action that will change the outcome. Action changes the outcome. So we've, we've got to stop surrendering to these narratives that all of us carry. This person here writing is no different to you and me. They just have a different set of experiences, but they're writing to me because they want change. And if you've got this far in this video, you're watching because you want change. What are the elements of change? State, fix your state. Yeah, look, I'm tired right now. I haven't slept a lot. I take sleep really seriously, so I'm not glorifying being tired, but I'm gonna go and train in a minute. I'm gonna do a bike session. I'm gonna eat well today. I'm gonna try and get my sleep routine back on track tonight. So I'm not gonna be passive. I'm gonna just keep my health going. I'm gonna keep working on this stuff. Keep doing the things that can move you forward. We don't have to stay trapped. We really don't have to stay trapped. So look, summary of all of this, I would say have this difficult conversation with your spouse. Spell out what you need. Ask for what you need. Risk it. Take the risk of that difficult conversation. Do it. And then get out of this story. Get out of this story. And if you can't do it for yourself, if you've got kids, do it for them. Say, right, I want them to see this amazing person who shifted their life and began a whole new story and really moved things forward, all right? So just make a decision that you're gonna turn it around and change it for someone else. If you can't do it for yourself, do it for your kids, do it for your friends, do it for anyone, do it for the, for the, for the universe, I don't care. Find a reason to shift the story. You don't have to be stuck on medication. You don't have to be stuck on poor health. You don't have to live in this story anymore. All right, I'll leave you with one thing, is it's nice to watch a video like this, and it's nice to go, oh yeah, it's different for Jonathan. It's not different for me. I have had to work at this every second for the last 20, 30 years to, to sort of get to the place where I am now. But the big takeaway for all of us is one thing, action. You're not gonna change your life by thinking about it. You change your life by taking action. All right, that is a long one. Uh, if you got this far, thank you so much. Please make sure you subscribe, share this with people. Come and check me out on Instagram. Check out the website here. You can book me to speak, but God bless you, my friend. And, and if there's anything in this that's helped you, then please use the links below. Email me with the challenges that you face and I'll shape some content just for you. All right, God bless everybody. My name is Jonathan Doyle. This has been The Daily Message. You are meant for greatness. You are meant for destiny and purpose. Your life is not over. It is just beginning. God bless. I have another message for you tomorrow.